Hi, I'm Tyler Locker, driver of the number 418 Blood Eagle four-cylinder. And I'm Kale Maven, driver of the number 17 Legend car. And I'm Levi Morris, driver of the M80 Legend car. Hey ho, what's going on everybody? Welcome back here, another episode, another week in the Blood Eagle Racing Podcast. Of course, I'm Tyler, I'm here with my two buddies, Cal and Levi. What's going on, guys? Oh, not much, man. Just got off a race night last night and uh Father's Day weekend. You know, we didn't do the show, but uh we were off that weekend. But I was at a Miss Ohio pageant with my stepdaughter Bailey. She did very well. And uh I think Levi raced, but I think he did pretty good. But uh he can tell all that later, but other than that, man, it's just been work, and I actually had to work a full week. And uh, oh wow, wow, that's odd I know. for you. Woo-hoo. I know. I know. <laughs> had to work a full week, and I know I hear it from Levi all the time. Whoa, you got to work today, like normal <laughs> people. <laughs> but uh, but no, it's just been just trying to get race cars ready to go, and we got a race coming up this weekend, but we'll talk about that later. But um, how's everything been going with you, Levi? I've oh, been going pretty well. I mean, it's nice getting to recuperate for today. Just kind of didn't really do much of anything. Been a been a busy last couple of weeks. Like like you said, with us being off the podcast, I've got quite a bit to update. Because we had a midweek show two weeks ago that I raced at. Then I did have a race at Burst Creek this past weekend, and then me and you both were at Portsmouth this just yes last night. So it's a yeah, it's, it was definitely a, a well due day to just take off and kind of chill around. Cause right. we gotta turn right back around and get we gotta turn right back around and get cracking the car because it's something I can talk about here and here when we get dig into the race stories. But I got a little bit to re, quite a bit to repair on the front end of my car. Yeah, there's uh yeah this this episode for sure is um jam packed. Uh, I know I got two segments that um. It is I mean I tell you what they're they're pretty good to talk about so up up here, uh we got a roll change at a track, um all I'm gonna say is I think it's a little too late, and uh then two other tracks up here are actually fighting over cars this coming Saturday, uh nobody raced around here this past weekend uh due to Lernerville, um this is like everyone's you know midsummer break. Uh, due to, you know, Lernerville having a big show up there. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get into those, uh, those, those two segments here in just a second, but, uh, go, go, well, go ahead, Cal. No, I was going to say, I, are you talking about the, the post that Rob posted earlier today? Yeah. No, yes. That is one of them. That's one of them. And the other one yeah, is I'll... another one he talked about, but then he deleted it because I don't know. I don't know what was said to him. I think I know. I know what was said to him, but I don't know if that was the reason. But well, we're going to yeah. get into it. and It's going to be unfiltered because uh, I'm just going to I'm going to speak my mind about it, and it's just the way it is, you know. I, especially if you see it on, if you just read the post, yes, you would understand. Oh wow, that's not right. Is it was it the best way of doing it? No, it, it wasn't the best way for them to do it, and I'll explain that here in a minute. But there, there's a lot more that that was good, that went into that decision than um, than what meets the eye. So we'll we'll just get into that. Well, like I said, I didn't race. You didn't race. Yeah, you two raced this uh, past weekend. So go. You know, we'll go ahead into that, and then uh, we'll get into them because we do have a guest, a pretty special guest on um, this uh, episode. So let's dive right in. Go ahead, guys. Yeah, uh, I'll just talk about uh, this weekend at Portsmouth. Uh, we went out there, and there was probably 17, 18 cars. And Levi, uh, Levi, I can tell you where he qualified. I qualified 10th, and so I was in heat too. But car was okay. was running fourth for a long time and then got passed in the last lap, finished fifth. So that's all right. That put a start in 10th in the feature and went at the feature and did some changes in between the heat race and feature. and. Man, I started out good for me and got going there for a little while. Moved up a few spots and, and then uh, 
I don't know what lap it was, but just another driver took me out. And after that, it was just horrible the rest of the race. But come home 12th. So, but oh, well, that was my Portsmouth race race weekend. What you got, Levi? Well, uh, I got three races to update on for me. Yeah. Which uh, now it's a week and a half ago. We had a midweek race at Atomic. Which uh, didn't go well. Once again, we kind of got the short end of the stick a little bit. We got moved around again, so we're up in the air on whether or not we're going to be there for the rest of the season. But I, we're just kind of we're letting the uh, letting the powers that be kind of direct everything needs to go. Find out if we're uh, what the best solution for everything is going to be. But nonetheless, we we did get the race. But um, I finished. I believe I finished fourth in my heat. And uh, put me, put me in the uh, put me inside fourth row, starting the um, main feature, chalking through it pretty good. Like it was, uh, I mean, there was only there was only two cautions in the whole uh, time we were out there, so it was high pace, keep your momentum up and running. I was up in fifth at one point, was battling there for about a good, two about a good half of the race and. After one of the cautions got jumbled back up, I got passed up by uh, passed up by two people, and at that point, I was just doing everything I could. I try to build momentum, try to get back around them, and made a wrong made a wrong decision there at the there at the very last corner of the race, and dove down, tried to get two people, and uh, killed all my momentum, and they got right back around me, and I ended up coming across the line in seventh at the Atomic feature. Then we go to Brush Creek last weekend. Which, I don't know what was going on with my car. I think I finally got a lot of the kinks come out of it. But coming out of Hot Lap Qualify, posted up my best time ever and was fourth quick out of the whole group. I was just a little over a tenth off from the fastest qualifier. But that that, that was the absolute best that car ever felt. Heat race, um, I goofed. The way our engines are built, a lot of the times we don't actually have to use the clutches to shift them since they're based on the uh, motorcycle race engines. But uh, I somehow found a false neutral in between third and fourth gear, going to turn one. Right off, right as soon as the green flag dropped, two people got around me and muscled my way in. Kept a well, once again finished in fourth place, which put me back once again inside inside fourth row for uh, the feature at Brush Creek, which we only had enough cars to do one feature, so it was a full field. And uh, my car decided it wanted to find a false neutral again in the feature, so. At one point, I dropped back down to, I dropped to 13th, like it was, they watered the track and it changed the way the track state was run, so all the adjustments I made in the pits didn't really work to my advantage. So. They watered it mid, like, mid, uh, mid show? Yeah, they, I hate they it when they down. do that. I, I hate it when they do that. Uh, I, I mean, I understand why they've done it, like, I, they had the best intentions, because it got super dry and super dusty, and it was getting... It was getting to the point it was getting pretty dangerous because you really couldn't see what was going on on the track. Um, and usually when that track waters it a little bit, it actually tacks it back up. Like, it actually does make the racing usually a lot better. But for whatever reason, it all stayed on the surface. So for the fir- for the about three quarters of the show, it had kind of like a, like almost like a greasy feel to it. Like a wet slick. So... Yeah, and it was like going into one and two, which at Brush Creek, almost like a hairpin. It's real tight, real sharp. So the few of us that actually has actually managed to get that thing to work running the high line, we'd actually have to throw our cars in and keep the cars turned. We'd have to keep our cars turned left and wait until it finally grabbed the cushion, and then we was able to start lining it back out. And It was almost like a slingshot coming out of the turn. So it was... I mean, it it made for an interesting race. It was the first time I really had to, like, actually calculate where I was going, what all the different lines I had to try to hit to try to gain an advantage, but clawed my back, up, back way back up and came across the line in 10th from uh, that race, which there was a scoring issue. Like, they missed they missed me and two other guys. They had us a lap down, but we have the... We talked it over with the race director. And, uh, as soon as we're able, we're going to, they're going to restore our finishing positions. So I came on with another top 10 then we get into Portsmouth uh went out and I qualified seventh fastest out of all out uh there ended up being 17 of us in the night one guy showed up right before heat races started but that put me outside second row in the first heat and uh 
ultimately I ended up finishing where I started. I uh, held off for fourth. I was up in third because one of the front runners, his throttle cable broke about midway into the race, so he had to pull off, and it was like it was a lap and a half to go. The the guy that showed up late, who was almost always up in the, he's almost always in the contention for the win, fought his way up from the back of the field, and get, he got around me with a lap and a half to go. At that point, I was doing everything I could just to not, I, I was going to try to make him work for it. I wasn't just going to sit there and let my jaw hit the floor, because I mean, he when he finally got around me, it made me look like I was standing still. But, and for the third race in a row, the inside fourth row, is where I started. And uh, I picked the wrong line getting into the race. I uh, tried burying it right down on the uke tires, trying to see if I can get some grip down there, because that's where it, that's where my car started coming in in the heat race. But when I did that, I fell back to 13th. And a couple cautions and all that, I had to, I started like picking them off one at a time through the cautions. And then I was actually uh, full head of steam trying to catch Kale. Cause he got, he was one of them that got around me and I was probably about two car lengths behind him when that guy came. I mean, it was, I just, all of a sudden I was like, I saw Kale to my inside. I was trying to show my nose just to let him know like, Hey, I'm here. And next thing I know, I saw the tail end of car, Kale's car in front of me. I was like, Oh man, he got hit. Like it was textbook. He got, he got, he got clean, but they had it rear act us and everything we took off and. I think we went two laps after that caution, and a big pileup happened. Two cars got in together, and I was about maybe a half a car length behind the guy in front of me. He had to dynamite his brakes, and I had to dynamite mine. I tried to get it to die at the bottom, and there was nowhere for me to go. I just I slammed into the back of him. That's the first time I've actually felt my Hans device actually snag my head. Because evidently, I hit enough, enough force it threw me forward in the car. Stoved up my arms. My arms are pretty pretty sore this morning but uh the scarier part of that was after i hit him like okay i caught my breath kept the car rolling so i wouldn't get because that track runs a no stop rule so i managed to keep my car rolling so they couldn't charge me with a stop and put me to the tail but in the midst of trying to get all that all of a sudden another driver came up and ju they just had i mean it, it almost felt like a sheet of paper between me and them and then they caught the front uh, front right wheel of the car I hit, and I, how they did not flip, I do not know. Me and the guy in front of me both were like, we could see the we could see the entire bottom of that car from where we were sitting. But she, she it was, it was a young girl, like she's under under fourteen, I think. Race, and this is her first season racing. So she held it together pretty well and got it collected, and she actually managed to finish the race on a blown tire. The bumper was completely bent off, and her oil cooler was smashed to pieces. It wasn't leaking. But my damage, I ended up getting bumper bent. Somehow the tab stayed on, so it was good. My grill's destroyed, and it shoved it back, and luckily it stopped before it hit my oil coolers. So they, they stayed intact. I thought I was I thought I was going to come off the track and have to replace an oil cooler. But collected myself up, re-racked. I think I started 11th on the next on the next green flag lap, and... Started picking them up, picking them off, and crossed the line in sixth. Nice. Nice. Right, we're proud of you, Levi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. But definitely a jam packed uh uh you know, last few races for sure. Yeah. For sure. No, nah, believe... they ran good last night. All in all, I mean I'm I'm feeling real comfortable. I've started really doing more tinkering around with the car, messing with the setups a little bit more, re retuning the carbs and all that was a big thing for it, but I'm really happy with the train we're going on right now, knock on wood, because I believe this was my, uh, usually I'm, usually I'm in the latter half of the field, but this last ring, I think it's five races in a row now, I've had top ten finishes. Okay, nice, nice. But, um, uh, now, heading into these next two, uh, just real quick, um, you know, because uh, like I said, we got a, uh, a, a guest here, um, but definitely needs talked about in, in the racing world, because, I mean, this can apply to... Uh, you know, many tracks, but um, I'll get into the juiciest one first, um, then you guys let me know what you think. So, uh, Dog Hollow made a VTEC. First of all, let's let, let's just get it out there. If, if you think it is about the cars, you're an idiot. Me, not knowing, I know what it's about. You got two tracks, 30 minutes from each other, Dog Hollow and Marion Center, getting eight cars a night. 
You go north to Hidden Valley, they're getting 25. You go south to Latrobe, they're getting 25. It has nothing to do with the cars. It's all about how them two, them, them two tracks, how, how the racing's going. And the racing's rough. It's rough. You know, I mean, if, if you're running decent, you are going to get doored. It is guaranteed. I could create a montage. I know, you know, a couple other guys who could. It's just the way it is. There's there's some people there that need to go. Because they, they all they're doing, I mean, they, if their cars are so fast, then they, then they don't need to scrub the tires and come up and, and, and door you or run you off the track. They can just pass you if their cars are that fast. So, but that's not the case, uh, unfortunately. So, uh, so Dog Hollow needed to come up with a way to get cars. They're, they're going to lose the track. You know, they're losing thousands of race. They're already in a hole beginning of this year. And they got to figure out, you know, something to do. So, instead of growing a set of balls and uh, saying, get out of here, don't come back. I don't care if you bring, you know, 10 people. It, it don't matter. There's a reason why they went from 20 cars to five, and um, I called this last year that this, this track would not make it the end of this year. I, I call. I mean, if you go back in the podcast from last last season, you'll you 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 will hear me say that. And uh, and I was right because I mean, who who's gonna want to run, especially right now with with the way everything is? Um, you know, it's hard to get parts. It's more expensive. The, the whole nine. And you go out there to try to run, and you're just you're just getting tore up. Ain't nobody can sustain that. No one can. Not not week in and week out. It hurts the morale. It hurts it hurts everything. So uh, so they came up with a with another idea of keeping them making a making another class of uh, yeah, like a VTEC class or a mod class. They they messed up right there. They should have just called it a, a Honda or a VTEC or variable timing, whatever they wanted to call it. They needed to call it that class and leave it. The problem with that is now they have to pay out two classes. So they're already in the hole. So now they're hoping that they, they got the, the certain group of people out of the way. The other, the, you know, everyone else who will, doesn't want to race with them, to be honest, will, will, will show up. And hopefully it's enough cars to support both classes. To me, it's stupid. To me, it's stupid. They're already in a financial uh, <clears throat> deficit. So why why now have to pay two up two classes out when you're only getting eight? Just 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 do. It. I mean, either way, it, it's too late. I I think it is, and I, and I I said that I voiced my opinion about it whenever I was on. You know, I got a couple phone calls about it. Um, and I and I just said I said I, I think don't doesn't matter what they really do. Uh, that ship has already sailed. So. Um. So yeah. So there's a there's a lot going around that. Um, with them making the two classes, and, and I saw a bunch of comments, and this is what I mean of if somebody doesn't know what's going on there, then you, you kind of see it's like, oh, well, why, why are they, you know, a, a Neon's one out there twice already. So why, why are they just putting the VTEX off to the side? Well, they'll think about it. If the Neon's winning, it ain't the cars. It's not, it's not, the, it's not the Hondas. It's not the Acuras. It's not whatever the, whatever's got a variable timing motor, it, it isn't that. Anyone with common sense could figure that out. If 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 another car that doesn't have that motor is winning, why are they separating them? Not because it's an unfair advantage. They've only had like you know a handful of races. So, um, so yeah. In other words, that that's what happened. They they ended up taking that class, and making another one, and there's a bunch of hoorah going around about it. And you know, I mean, it's just uh. You know, I, I read a comment that it was just, you know, they're going to wreck anyway. No, they're not. They're going to be in another class. The problem's in another class. The You don't you don't see that in, in any other drivers out there. And uh, there was another uh, post about, you know, rough driving in the four cylinders. And I said, and hey, I always, everyone knows on here I, I love Latrobe. Um, but every driver down there is respectful. I can trust anybody on my inside. I cannot say that about any other any other track that I've gone to. That doesn't matter what it is. In my years of racing, I can never say that I've, I can trust every driver on my inside. I mean, Levi, you've watched firsthand. Come from 12th mm -hmm. up through the field. Did I get beaten back? No. Everyone picked the line, and hey, we're, we're racing. We're battling for position, and it's not 
you know, throwing it in there, you know, sliding, skimming the tires, coming up, you know, pushing guys off. No, everyone's running the line. That's it. So, I mean, it's, it's, that's how you know it's, 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 it's a problem of a certain group of people. Because you go north or south or east or west, and they're getting cars. Right in the area where they race, they're not getting cars. And it's not, I, I'm, trust me. Bob Pease is the fastest car I've ever raced against. So no one can say, well, you're going away from competition. Because I'll tell you right now, I'll, Bob could go anywhere and win. And when I say win, I mean pull straight away. So, you know, it's because I pull straight away on most guys down the trobe. And he pulls straight away on me. So, <laughs> what's, that, what's that mean? You know, he's uh, he got to figure it out what Bob does. But that, So, it's definitely not I'm afraid of competition or anything like that. Because I know that has been said. But that's definitely not the case. Now. Um, this next one is the one that you, uh, saw, Kel. Um, then we can go I, back. And I saw the, I saw the last one you saw too. It was splitting them up like that. I'm like, Oh, you saw that? He got rid of that. Yeah. I'm, yeah. He, I saw dog hollows, uh, post on that, making the two classes. I'm like, that's ridiculous. Right. Well, uh, that, that's why though is, you know, uh, well, you knew the reason. Yeah. What are you saying? Levi? I witnessed it. I'll say I witnessed it firsthand when I was there. The reason. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and, and look at that. And you're just someone who, who's never been at the track, who doesn't know nobody, who's just watching a race. You're all you're doing is watching a race, and you can see it. And uh, you know, I, in all my years of racing, I never called a promoter. I called that particular promoter and told him the ramifications that is going to happen. Because I wasn't the only one. I wasn't the only one talking about it. But you know, it got to the point where I couldn't even race no more. It wasn't. It wasn't racing. It was me getting to the lead. As soon as I start pulling, they skim the tires and they they break something on my car. It was every time. Every time they ran them cars a long time, they know the weak points, and they were going for them. What kind of what what, what kind of racing is that? That that it's, that's ridiculous. We don't have a couple thousand in these cars. And I don't I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. If, if you're gonna buy, especially a like a nice Cobalt or Honda, you're gonna pay a couple grand to just just for the car. That, that's not everything else you're going to have into it. You're going to pay at least a couple grand. Um, so, it's, and, and, and now, you know, with, with us having, you know, 8,000, 5,000 here, 10,000 there, everyone, you know, is, is, is it's not no longer, you know, old, the old junkyard style, bash the windows out, let's go. It's not like that no more. So, uh, it, you know, it sucks because that track is so close, and I've said that. That track is close right now with, with you know, with, Fuel prices through the through the roof. I would love to go there, and I'm going to now. I'm going to go support them. I'll be there Friday, but uh, it's just I think it's I think it's a little a little too late, and because you know every everyone's kind of hurting on the cars. Four cylinders are the only ones that are kind of still sustaining. Like I said at Hidden Valley, who just started this year, and Latrobe. So, but uh, but the next one is uh, two two uh, two tracks. Right now, battling uh, over over cars. So uh, this Saturday coming up, um, Marion Center had a five hundred dollar to win, just a little special, and you know nothing crazy. Um, but they were going to throw an extra couple bucks out there, and um, a I guess you could say a rival track, Hidden Valley, um, in Clearfield, Pennsylvania. Um, they threw up a thousand dollars, thousand dollars to win, if you know, 40 or more cars show up. So then Marion Center comes back and says, 1,500 to win if 40 more cars show up. So, I, I mean, I can totally see how Marion Center is, you know, uh, upset. I mean, right now, hey, everyone's battling over cars, man. I mean, because it's, it's, it's few and far between. I, I know a handful of drivers that have stopped already. And I'm coming off of a um, three-week, uh, well, three or four weeks, three weeks, you know, uh, break. So... Uh, yeah, it's it's rather funny, but I could definitely see how Marion Center could be upset because they had the the special going on first. But what they should have done is just had a fifteen hundred dollar race in the beginning, and that was it. That was what is what they should have done. Then because no one's gonna unless it's SCDRA, ain't no no regular track gonna put up that kind of money. Uh, you know, twice a year. So, uh, but yeah, that them are the two things. My my opinion about it is um. Yeah, I kind of agree with, uh, you know, like with the post that I saw from Rob Williams, 
Um, you know, just go out and have fun. Go to whatever track you want to go to. Because uh, either way you look at it, uh, neither track's going to get 40 cars. So just, just go out, have fun, and, you know, whatever one you feel like racing that night, go to it. So, because, uh, yeah, there's there's definitely not 40 cars coming. That's that's for sure for both of them. But, all right, yeah, we like I said, we got a, uh, we got a guest. You guys got anything to say about those two? For, I'm trying to, like, because I know we got a guest. Yeah. I'm trying to keep the podcast yeah. short, uh, too. I mean, I could have went on those two subjects for another 20 minutes, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Oh, no, we still they, have a whole second half. So, <laughs> yeah, that those two tracks going at it like that. I mean, it's just it's crazy. And I like what Rob Williams said. He said, "Just have fun. Just go do what you want to." do. So, right, right, yeah. So I'm like, it's, you, it's, you, it's, it's it's ridiculous. Right, right. But uh, uh, hopefully both of them got whatever. Yeah, hopefully both of them got good car counts to where they you know they can make some money you know so they can stay open and um. And like I said, because I think uh, old dog hollow, I'd say in two three weeks, it's just it's just not going to work because they they put themselves yeah. in a financial, uh, they put themselves behind eight ball by creating two cars and not having to pay out seven hundred dollars to it's, each, you know, to to the winners. Well, that's what I was, together. So, that was actually what I was getting to ask if it was the same payout. Yep, same exact payout. So, so I know uh, th- this is just one thing I want to. It's not necessarily playing devil's advocate, but one thing I was actually want to ask about that. I know Latrobe already does not allow VTEX. Are there any other of the tracks around that do not allow VTEX? Or no. Is it just... It's just Latrobe. Oh, no, Latrobe yeah, okay. and Bedford. Latrobe and Bedford, because okay. Latrobe's a half mile and Bedford's a half, uh, five-eighths mile. They say because of the speed. But, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's not... They, they, they could switch yeah. if they wanted to. But, um, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I, what, I, I, what I was going to say is just guessing at a potential gamble is where they have... Uh, other tracks in the area that may start leading towards getting rid of them. That might be a way to bolster that class. But once again, that's a gamble, not right. really a set in stone. Right. I mean, if and they, that, if that's they, me speculating. Right. Right. It, it. If, if they just came up and just made, you know, I just don't like how they put the word mod in there. That's where everyone's having, that's where everyone's making, you know, is because it's not, a, the other class isn't a stock class. It's just a non-variable timing class. That's it. And eventually, it is gonna have to be like that. Yeah, you got you got cars that you know. I mean, uh, but the, each year, like the neon and the cavy, yeah, hey, they they can still run. I mean, they can. I've seen many cars that uh, you know that outrun Hondas in K series, no problem. But uh, with with parts getting more scarce and more scarce, eventually they're gonna regress, and it's gonna be strictly Hondas and Acuras because you can still get parts for them. So and that that because that's staying naturally aspirated. That's not, that's no turbo, no nothing. You know the Hondas are gonna, it's gonna be nothing but a bunch of Hondas out there like how it was when it first came about and there was nothing but neons. So I I think eventually for the sport, um, to to keep growing, they're gonna have to split them up. There's there's gonna have to be a variable timing class and a non-variable timing class. That's it. So, you know you know what I'm saying because like okay plus one valves for a neon. Yeah, find them. You're not. You're not going to. You're not going to. Especially now, you could have found them before COVID, but you ain't finding them now. You know, and um, there are certain companies that quit making cams, and then now you're getting regrinds, and you know, so they're not the same. And it's just, you know, five, ten years down the road, you know, like I said, for that class to keep growing, they're gonna have to do that. They're gonna have to split them. That is something I wanted to ask Rob next time we have him on here. I know he's busy on his boat. But that is something I wanted to ask him about the SCDRA. How are you going to do? Are you just going to do a free for all, or you know what? What's his thoughts on that? On on just splitting them up. So, but that yeah. that is a that's, that's another another whole Ooh. thing to talk about. But all right, let's let's get in here uh, to our guests. We're gonna um, we got them waiting on the line here. So uh, let's let, let's get them in. All right, now we got our guests here um, uh, on the line. We got. Uh, uh, Jeff and um, Wyatt, uh, how's it going, guys? We're good. How are y'all? Oh, we're doing, doing good, man. Good, doing, yeah, it's good. We're, we're doing real good. Now, um, you know, you know, these two are are, are pretty. Uh, you know, they, they they run down Texas, so we'll we'll have them get into that. But uh, you know, we do something you know pretty cool with their series, and uh, you know, I'm happy you know to see that you know they're putting it on and um, everything. Like I said, they'll they'll explain that in a second. But first, 
what we like to do here um, on a Blood Eagle Racing podcast is first tell us a little bit about you guys yourself. You know, you know how long you guys been in racing. You know, and just 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 the whole nine. So uh, whenever you're ready. Well, I've been racing for three years now. I've started off in the junior limited class, and I um I started off uh. Mm, 2019, I think. Yeah. And I started when I was 13 and just came from here. Wow. Yeah, same. I was, uh, yeah. well, the first time I ever hopped in a race car, it was, uh, at 13 as well. So, <laughs> so I, so me and yeah. you can re- relate a little bit, you know. But, um, so, uh, so where are you guys at down in Texas? And, um, like, uh, then, you know, tell us a little about the series that, uh, you know, that, that, that you race in. Well, we, ra- we race, uh, in Waco. And there, it's at heart of Texas. Quarter mile dirt track, high bank. Uh, uh, the class has been in existence probably about three or four years now. It uh, the class started off with probably three or four junior limiteds. Uh, from, uh, a junior limited modified is actually what it is. Uh, just like an IMCA modified, but it's just a scaled down version. Uh, 350 carburetor, hydraulic camshafts, you know, uh, and we and we ventured out and run a couple of races at other places, uh, Kennedale Speedway and Grayson County. And about a month ago, we ventured off to Grayson County and and uh, we picked up a win up there. And I and I'll let White explain, and that was his very first win. So I'll let him kind of explain that to you a little bit. Oh, for sure. Yeah, How was we, that, White? Yeah, we wanted to travel a little bit this year, and we decided to go up, try something new, go up to Grayson. And it's north of Dallas, and we just we won the heat race. We looked, we were good, we were fast all night, and started up front on the feature, and just kind of really just drove away on the field and had a couple of cautions, but it was really a good night. Good. Now, so so cool. this so this series that you guys are in, so so it is a traveling series because I know a little bit. Kel, you know, has obviously talked to me about it uh, some, but you know, just just for our listeners and everything. Um, so it, so is it a, is it just a one track or, you know, is there a, you know, do you guys travel around as a series? No, uh, not necessarily. They have different tracks around the state that run a junior limited class. Uh, our home track is, is kind of the front leader in that. Uh, and it's probably been around like I said, three or four years, but there's other tracks, but it's not a traveling series. Okay. Uh, each track has its own little point fun, own little, uh, championship type deal, but uh, but but it's interesting you say that. Uh, we may be working on something like that to give the kids maybe like a chance to win a state title type deal. Uh, and I'm I'm in talks with another guy at Grayson County uh, to try to make all that come come to fruition type deal. Okay, yeah. that, that that's really cool. So so this so uh, you know, that particular class is um, what what would you say thirteen to sixteen. Twelve to six. Yes, uh, the age group uh, for at least Art of Texas, it's twelve to sixteen, and as long as you're sixteen when the season starts, is that's when you can keep racing. That's awesome. I I totally wish they had something up here like that. Like we don't really have mods up in Pennsylvania. Um, I think you know maybe one track you know within an hour and a half radius has has it, but no one really else does. And um, but but just to have that uh that starter class you know to, to to get your feet wet to you know and and it's a spec class too so you know it keeps costs down and you know especially right now that's definitely what uh racing needs as a whole um but that's that you know that's that's awesome go ahead Kel. i know you had some questions for him i keep cutting you off <laughs> no no you're good uh i was just gonna tell why congratulations on his uh on his win up there at grayson county and yeah, um uh, what uh so I, I think your dad told me this last weekend you ran second. So uh, it seems like you're knocking at the door at Heart of Texas. I'm, I know you want to win there pretty bad because that's close to home, you know, just right down the road. So uh, yes, sir. what would it what, what would it feel like just to, to win at your home track? You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, it's I've been racing there, like I said, for three years. And I mean, we yeah, we've been knocking on the door just to get a win. And there it would be really cool just to. We wanted to originally get a win at my home track, the first my first win, but we uh we couldn't. 
That's all right, unless you got to win. Yeah, uh, it is. I know your dad was proud. He, he was. He, yeah, he and uh, on Facebook and texting me and stuff. I, that was that was awesome, awesome deal. Yeah, Friday night. I mean, we were running, we were leading about the whole race, and we just got into lap traffic, and you know, we made a mistake hitting lap traffic, and I got passed, and kind of a one lane track on the bottom, but it's always yeah. racing. That's right. You just gotta race the conditions, whatever they give you. So, but uh, what uh, made you want to get into racing? Well, uh, my uh, dad, he's been racing. He was racing for a long time, and then I just always, I was always watching him. I always wanted to do it, and finally one time, when we were, when I was thirteen, I, I asked him if I could race, and he thought, he thought I was crazy. I thought he didn't actually. I, he thought I actually didn't want to do it, and then kept asking him. It finally turned out that he got a car and started racing. That's good. What kind of car you run? I mean, was it what's the chassis? I run a uh, KP Customs. It's a uh, guy from Waxahachie and Wichita Falls. Uh, Walk Wichita Falls. I'm sorry. And <laughs> he has uh, he builds a couple cars, and it's my it's his first car he's ever built. Is the one I'm running. Oh wow! Yeah. Well, seems to be doing good. So well, that's good. Yeah, it is. Yep. So what yeah, is uh? You, you guys have a tire rule and stuff down there, or how how does like how does that work? Like how are the rules for that class um you know go by? I know you said about a solid cam and and uh you know certain carbon stuff, but how how is uh how's the rest of it? Yeah. Yes, we run a uh, Hoosier 500, and it's a little different from the tires that the uh upper class the sport mod drivers will run and we have uh, run a 350 carburetor uh two barrel and yeah that's that's really it uh it, they, they pretty much run the same as an imc southern sport mod chassis there's only a couple differences is, is one one is the carburetor and one's a hydraulic camshaft uh and they don't get a full spoiler but other than that it, it's it's uh it's pretty much the same car, you know. Uh, you move up, you change the carburetor, and you change the camshaft, and you go run with the big boys. And get a bigger spoiler. Yeah, you get a full, you get a full spoiler. <laughs> you don't can he? <laughs> yeah, can he? Uh, like, say he wanted to run uh, limited. Can he run sport mod that night as well, or is it just strictly limited? Not, not for us. Uh, they do have some rule changes this year. Um, but IMCA, I think you have to be a certain age before they'll allow you to get a license. And, and oh. for that, and, and some guys do run other classes at other tracks, but like I said, we, we choose to run this class and hone in on, on driving this car in this class, uh, for his skill level. Um, and, and we don't want to, we don't want to run with, with grown adults, so to speak, because I'm, you know, you know how that, that happens. You grown adults out there racing hard and they got a kid out there and it's, it's nothing ever seems to happen it's good from that seems like right yeah. yeah yeah guys think they can just push him around because he's a kid yeah yeah yep <laughs> i know what you're talking and, and, this is, and, and we're a beginner and this is a beginner class it's, it's, it's a chance to learn for these kids and like i said levi this is still started off three or four years ago with three or four cars and now we're up 15 18 cars you know it's uh where it was hard to win two or three years ago when he was a beginner. I mean, it's equally as tough now to even win at your home track because you've got kids out there, you know, they're learning, they're trying to hold their line. Uh, and like I said, you know, one groove track last Friday night, you know, they, they gave us a smooth track and and you had to make a business decision. Either you go high or go low to miss, miss the other cars. And the guy, little PJ Egbert's son, I mean, he, he's a smooth little driver and he he did exactly what, you should do. If the driver goes high, you go low, you know, and you're not going to lose anything. So, and unfortunately, we came out on the losing end, but hey, it was still a good race, good learning experience. And, and next time, you know, uh, we'll, we'll make the right decision. Heck yeah. Now, the, um, I, now I don't, I don't know. Too, sorry. Yeah. I'll leave. I go ahead. You got any questions for him before I keep asking questions? <laughs> That's all right, guys. You can ask me if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, kind of, kind of alluding to like what Kale was talking about. Like, if you want to run both classes, is that 
ultimately what your plan is is move up with that. Are you going to carry that same car over to a new one years down the road, or you going to invest in an all new setup and move up to the sport mod, or what? What what kind of outlook are you looking when it comes from that? Yeah, well, the plan, I mean, probably maybe moved up the sport mod since we already had the car and everything. We could just move right up there. I mean, there's also more classes at Heart of Texas, like I stock and factory stock and, like, modified. But we'll probably – we'll go to sport mod for a couple of years and see how that works out. Yeah, that's – I mean, financially, that is definitely the way to go. I mean, it's – I always talk about money on here because I think of, you know, because racing is expensive. But, I mean, just even as a um, standpoint financially, that is just – that's a smart way to do it. You're getting you're getting these kids involved, um, you know, at a decent price. And then once once you buy it, then all you got to do is change a few little things once they get to the age and then, and then go run, you know, the next class up. You don't got to go out now, sell all this, all, you know, sell all this, and then, you know, go buy another car. You can kind of just move up. And I, I tell you what, I, I really – every time um, that I hear more about this series and stuff – or, you know, that class down there. I, I like it more and more. But um, now I don't know too much about – well, I've really never really raced outside of the northeast up here. But um, now Texas, I think of sand. But I know it's not all sand. So <laughs> what's the – what's the uh, – what's the, like, the, the track state? Like, what, what, what do you guys use? Topsoil? You guys use clay? Like, what's – Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's like a black clay at most tracks. Uh, you go a little further out west, it's kind of a – kind of a sandy gritty type deal uh you go to the north texas texas area it's, they're about the same as hard texas it's a kind of a black gumbo type deal uh it's fast when it's tacky uh it goes dry but then then it takes on rubber some nights um uh, and you, you just gotta hone in on, on what you run on uh but yeah that's pretty much i mean it's, it's like a black gumbo black mud type you know dirt i guess right Right, I'm trying to get Kel to um come up, pick up my car uh, in his uh, motorhome, and then you know bring me down to Texas and uh, do some racing. <laughs> but uh, he, I, I still haven't talked him into it yet. I don't, yeah, I don't know what it's gonna take. But but um, so so with this with this class um like uh you know progressing and stuff um now you did something actually, Kel. I'll go ahead and let you uh, explain a little bit better. But so you you did something, um, Kel. You know you two both with the blood eagle racing podcast and um you know with that class down there uh Kel, go ahead and you know say about a little bit the people who didn't catch it on facebook um just me and jeff had been talking about just doing something for these kids you know um just to give them a little more payout because their their payouts there at heart of texas isn't very good so we just linked up with Jeff and Jeff's kind of organizing all that down there for us. And he's, uh, you know, making it a little fun for some of the kids down there in that series. So we're just doing a little something for them and maybe do a little more in, in the future, you know, so we appreciate Jeff doing that for us. We sent some stickers down there and a lot of those kids got them on their cars and hopefully more people listen to the show and stuff. And we got Wyatt on here. So maybe in the future we'll get some of those other drivers, on here yeah, you that, know that'd be great down the, down the line yeah and we do appreciate you jeff uh you know i mean coordinating that down there for us but i have another question for uh why why now since you started racing what what's the the best thing about racing that you know in, in your eyes what, what's the best thing about racing what, what do you love the most about racing probably would be like the mo the competition we have a lot of good competition in the junior limited class it's not just one guy running up front every night like it used to, it was originally. And, I mean, just there's a couple of guys that I like running against that are a lot of competition, like the the 7C of Colton Asphere and uh, the 730 of Jeff Bowser Jr. and Brady Garrick, uh, the 10 car. I mean, they're, it's just fun to have competition and race hard every night. Yeah. That's, and not worry about tearing your car up. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it too. Yeah, it's uh, it's a, they're already a full time job. Let alone if you got of uh, you know, fix stuff that's broken. So, but no, that's that's really cool, man. Yeah, like I said, I I mean, I started around the same time you did, and I it was it's the same. You just out there, you are having a blast, everybody, and um, it's just a you know that those were the days that were pure and full of fun. Now they're full of aggravation. So enjoy it. <laughs> so enjoy it while it lasts. 
<laughs> but Wyatt, um, I got a question for you. Go ahead. Where did you get get your number from? I uh, got my number from uh, my dad. He always run eighty nine, and he got he originally got his number from the year he graduated. And I just wanted eighty nine. Kale knew the answer that already. I already knew because that's the year me and him graduated. So, yeah. <laughs> but these these boys that are on the phone with us right now, uh, Levi and Tyler, they weren't even born yet. So, oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> no, we weren't. <laughs> yeah, that. That number's kind of synonymous for, for, for my last name, and he's going to carry on the number and, and going to do his own thing and have his own little legacy on, under that deal. And, and like I said, you know, this is a junior limited class, and a couple years uh, we'll, we'll move up to the IMCA Sport Mod and get us a license and, and travel a little bit more, I guess. And then and who, who's to say, you know, we don't try a different class, you know, and, and just kind of keep moving up. So uh, yeah. if he is, if he still enjoys it and wants to have fun, and that's what it's all about. It's you know, it's, it's uh, at, at first it was like you know we got to win, win, win. Everybody, we got to win, got to win. Everybody got to win. Everybody wants to win. And then it just we just had a long father and son talk one time, and it's like, hey, we got to get back to having fun. You know, uh, go out there, have fun, be safe. You know, you try to get you a win, but don't put yourself in a position where you can't get out of, of trouble. You know, and yeah, uh, if you're having fun doing it. That's that's the best part. But once you once you lose that that fun part of it to me that that's that's to me and, and me and my son why I've talked about it then then it's, it's you know you don't need to be doing it anymore you know that's just my opinion yeah you got any plans to get back in the car Jeff or just focus <laughs> on him uh if you if you listen to my son yeah he wants me to go run a, run an eco mod you know he, he wants me to take the car and go run a couple shows with with eco mod guys but you know you know, Cal, it's, I would love to do it. So uh, he was younger when, when I raced, and uh, I, I don't know he really, really wants to uh, see me wheel a car around a couple more times. And, and uh, we've talked about it, and, uh, and and I still may do it. You know, uh, but yeah, I, we've talked about it. We've talked about it. Huh. Good deal. So to be continued. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To be continued. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Oh, good deal, good deal. You guys got um, uh, Levi, Kel, you guys got anything else for these guys? I I just want to thank them for coming on here and jumping on the show with us and uh, trying to – and spreading that word down there in the Texas area about our podcast. Man, we appreciate it, and the numbers keep going up. And I think part of it because of what you all are doing down there, and we appreciate it. Yeah. Well, you all are getting some airtime. Uh, I visit with Joe Spillman. Uh, probably on a weekly basis and just kind of on the, Hey, let them know. Hey, and, and, and they give y'all airtime. Uh, I went up in stands last Friday night and sitting with the family in intermission and the, uh, the track announcer was, was giving all some props and about the junior limited stars of tomorrow. That's what they call them stars of tomorrow. Uh, and they, they were giving the podcast some, some shouts. And, uh, so, uh, I don't like, I'm not, I'm not a numbers guy. I don't know how that looks on y'all's end, but it looks good. Y'all probably it looks good. It, it's helping. I know probably got about twelve or fifteen cars down here with with y'all sticker on it. And uh, uh, if we can ever get to Victory Lane, well, down here we'll thank you for all of it. And uh, it's like I told uh, Shelby and those guys that he allowed us to do it. Shelby's the promoter. Shelby Holder is the promoter at Hard Texas Speedway. I'm give them a shout out. Also, uh, he he's allowed me to do it and uh, and to grow this cat class and whatever we need to do. You know, uh, I, I never would have dreamed three or four years ago, we'd have 15, 18 cars every night. I mean, it's, um, that's great. It's, it's, it's growing. Yeah. And that's, and that's a, uh, you know, I, I've seen in my time in racing, I've seen, um, you know, uh, a, a couple other classes, you know, come and go. And, uh, that, that is great to hear that because, um, you know, them first couple of years are, are the hardest trying to get the guys and everybody to, to, you know, to get into that class. And cause you know, you, there's too many unknowns, you know, or are you going to put money in something that's going to fail or whatever, but no, that's, that's, that's fantastic. And a handful of years having that kind of car count is uh that's, that's great. And I'm, I'm happy for you guys for sure. And everybody involved, but, um, but all right. Yeah, we will definitely, um, I ha have, we got to have you back on for sure. Um, you know, later in the year to see how, you see how you're doing, Wyatt, and see if Jeff got back in a car yet, or if you know, uh, 
and all, all that good stuff. So um, you said later this year, right? Yeah, until late... December, right? <laughs> oh, oh, so you guys run until December? No. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I was, I was gonna say, why? Well, I... <laughs> <laughs> no. What, what does uh does Wyatt? Sorry to uh, interrupt you, Tyler, but does Wyatt have eye racing? Does he do anything uh, like that during the winter time to practice or anything or? No, I don't have eye racing. I I've always wanted to get something like it though. It yeah. seems fun. It seems it, it seems like it's real. I mean, it seems like it would help, but I just never got it and never got into it. It's fun. We all got it and it, it's a blast. We kind of do that during the winter time when we're not actually racing our own cars. So, uh-huh. it's, it's a lot of fun. We have some some series, so you might have to talk to dad and they get you a, uh, some eye racing stuff. Yeah. And I just want to say thank y'all for everything y'all done for this class so far. I mean, it's just twenty dollars in the thing, the bonus money helps a lot just for a junior limited car. I mean, one running for hundred to win and just make it one hundred and twenty. So, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, for sure. So in racing, every dollar counts, man. That's that's for sure. That's, that's uh, you know, oh yeah, yeah. No, we're we're hey, we're more than happy to to you know contribute a little bit but yeah but like i said we'll definitely have you guys back on a podcast for sure and we got to get a couple other drivers um from that uh junior class uh, on here and um you know, get an interview and, and see what they're up to so but now we, we appreciate it and uh and hey we'll, we'll catch you guys later all right sounds good thank y'all for having us on thank you buddy And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, was Jeff and Wyatt Sexton. Really appreciate them coming on. I, I'm telling you, I I love what they're doing down there. Uh, you know, with that um, junior class, and I already said I wish they had something uh, up here for like that. Actually, off air, we were talking a little bit, and um, you know, I said, you know, my first race, you know, well, not first race, but it was like my third race. Whenever I was 13, you know, racing with 40 cars. Starting on the front row was, you know, I can only imagine, um, uh, you know, them guys down there and, uh, you know, just having a blast. And because I know how, how much fun I had, you know, like I said, when I first uh, started. So, but that's it's seriously great. And I, I really wish uh, they had something up here like that. Yeah, good guys down there, man. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But okay, heading into, um, I mean, really news, uh, you know, it's, because like I said, this is a rather longer podcast. I really don't got much um, for news at all. Uh, actually, I got none. So, do you guys got anything for news? Um, only thing I got is uh, next weekend, the Tri-State Legend Car Series. They're traveling to Indiana to race at the Rush County Fairgrounds. for a, It's a little small track down there. So, they're going to tackle that. And then uh, the... Ohio Valley Legend Car Series has a race next Sunday. It was supposed to be a big fireworks show, but they couldn't get fireworks. So it's just going to be a regular show. But the Legend Cars are going to be doing the dirt road course again. And Levi loves that, and I don't. Oh, I love it. I love it. But other than that. Oh, and the. Yeah. And the winners this week. Uh at the tri-state legend car race at Florence, Kentucky, where the winner was Tyler Scott. And then the winner last night was Ronnie Niehaus for the Ohio Valley legend car series at Portsmouth oh, heck raceway yeah. park. You know what? I got to give a shout out to you before I forget. Cause I almost forgot. And I wanted to do this for the, uh, shout out to Jacob McDaniel for absolutely tearing it. Oh yeah. He has been doing such a great job. Oh my gosh. County. He's been tearing. I mean, he sent me a video. And I said, man, he said, you, you really smoked him. And uh, he, uh, I know he had some trouble Friday night. Yeah, he works, you know, nose at a grindstone, getting everything done. Then he goes out there and does a heck of a job. I think it's the seventh win down there at uh, Tyler County. So he's got to get his talent yeah. up here. Uh, that's all I got to say. Cause, uh, I got me, me I got a shot out, out too. Who? Uh, Josh Dietz in his crate late model. He's got a sticker on one of our stickers on his car. And he finished second at Moeller on on a Friday night and uh, he's just knocking on that door, getting another win in that crate late model. So just, he's, he's doing a pretty good job. So oh, shout out to him. Heck yeah. 
Um, he's running. He's running better than he was early in the season. So that's right. good to see. Right. Yeah. Heck yeah. It's always nice to see saw a driver bounce back for sure. Um, but uh, Levi, you got uh, the sponsors ready to go? Yes, I do. We'd like to thank here at the Blood Eagle Racing Podcast. We'd like to thank Cliff Bird Chassis, First Guardian, Side of Smiles, Southern Ohio Speed, Texas Auto Ranch, JP Enterprise, NK Tuning, and last but not least, TL General Labor. Whoop, if you all would like to sponsor the, <laughs> if you all would like to be a become a sponsor, we'll uh we'll definitely give you a shout out. Uh, may bring you on, let you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and. It'll help us out and uh, help us all grow and help just make a make it a better place for the the weekender to be able to come and uh, either listen to us talk or get a chance to talk to themselves. That's right. That's right. I do have another shout out. Oh, I'm sorry you missed that segment. Okay, everybody, no, I'm just go. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> now I just want to say um, props to Levi. These last few weeks, he's been trying a lot of things on his car and he's been getting a lot of faster lot faster and he's been racing a lot better i know it's only his second year racing but man he's been showing signs of him big time improvement he he's kicking my tail in and he's been doing a really good job so good job levi yeah, good we're proud of you we're proud of you levi. i appreciate it yeah we're proud of you but all right that is it for this uh week it's episode of the podcast we'll catch everybody next week hopefully um with uh some more uh some more good news from uh, at least you know, me and Levi. So finally getting back in the seat and hopefully going to dominate. That's the plan. We'll see how it goes. All right, we'll catch everybody next week. Worldwide.